So in the previous lecture, we talked about monads and looked a little bit at the in and outs of, of how they work. Um, in this lecture, we will continue along the same uh, trajectory, but look at something, a particular feature of F-sharp, which is called computation expressions. Uh, computation expressions are essentially just uh, syntactic sugar for making it more convenient and um, practical to work with monads. And um, I want to show you a couple of examples of how this comes about uh, to, to sort of gain an understanding of what computation expressions actually are doing in the background. And then we will conclude this lecture by looking at how we can uh, create our own computation expressions because they are perfectly programmable and extensible. Um, so um, let's first of all define so that we have three functions. F G and H, and they all have this A to option of B uh, signature. So you know, these are all three functions uh, take some value A and produce a uh, option of B. Uh, and then I have some, um, some function called, we can just call it do stuff. And that takes a B, and a B, and a B, and produces some C. Now, since all these are failing functions, potentially failing functions, in, in normal imperative programming, this is a classical case for the, for the pyramid of doom. So if I would do this in, in uh, start this example in, for example, Python, I could say something like, Result 1 equals f on some x1. And then I would say if r1 is not none, then I can say, okay, um, r2 equals g on some x2. If R2 is not none. R3 equals G of some X3. If R3 is not none, then I can do do stuff uh, R1, R2, R3. And you see how this just goes completely, out, gets out of hand quickly. More and more indentation. And but this is ugly, this is hard to read, this is, this is really not particularly nice. So let's see if we can if we define the option monad and see if the option monad somehow can help with this situation. So let's get rid of this and implement this with our new friend bind and I'm going to use the shove operator. Okay, so I would know then now that f on x1, that produces an option. I can shove that into, and now I need to somehow capture the result. So I need to create a lambda function. Fun r1, and then I can say, okay, f, uh, not fg of x2, and I can shove that into and a new lambda function, R2, and then I can shove that into, uh, then I can do edge of x3, and then I can shove that into, and then I can say, well, fun uh, R3, and then I can say, uh, sum, do stuff r1 r2 r3 and that closes that then we need to close that and then we close that and then we close that right so that's how you could do it with uh, directly with a with a monad and and this is not much of an improvement is it
I mean, I could write it on a single line, but it wouldn't make it any more readable. So this is, this is, uh, this wasn't really the remedy, was it? So if we'll just look at this expression, what, here, what happens here is that, so if I apply this and it fails, then this thing here will just turn everything into nothing and it will just shortcut the whole computation. Uh, so, and then so on. So, 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 that's, so this computation will automatically shortcut. So if there's something goes wrong, the whole thing returns, uh, returns nothing. And it's only in case that we get, get to the end where we actually will have this thing return something useful. Now, this is, this is not really good. And this is where computation expressions come to our aid. And languages like Haskell and PureScript and so on, they have similar inventions because, because nobody really wants to read code like that. So in F sharp, we could write user computation expression to do the exact same thing. We can say option. This is the name of the, this would be sort of a handle saying, okay, now I want to use the option computation expression, curly brace. And then I can say left bang. And this is important, this little bang here, which is, uh, it says that bind a name that you get from binding uh, or flat mapping the, resu the, the result. So now I can say bar R1 equals Fx1. Left bang R2 equals G on X2. Left bang R3. H, X, H3, and then I can say return um, do stuff uh, R1, R2, R3, and computation expression. Now this is just pure syntactic sugar, which essentially just is compiled and turned automatically into exactly what I had in the previous uh, ex expression with explicit lambdas. And the, the trick here is these left bangs, which will insert sort of flat map or, or bind in the right way. And it will then including a, a uh, lambda function. But this is now much nicer. So this looks like, like just normal code, which is say, well, okay, we call a function. This can return an option. If there is something, if this returns sum, I will sum say 42, then this thing here will, R1 will contain the value 42. And if this succeeds, this will contain the value and I can just use them like normal. I can just pass them straight into do stuff. And remember that do stuff did not return a option type. So when I return from this thing, I need to wrap, call this function return that we talked about in, in the previous section. Or I could just say, it doesn't matter, it's the same thing. It, because the return for option is sum. Now, if you go to, uh, if you go to F Sharp Interactive and try this out, which you, I think you should do, this won't work. The reason is that for some weird reason, uh, they have decided not to have an option computation expression in the standard library. However, there is a F sharp a library called F sharp plus, which has it. So, and that's a great library. There's loads of nice functional stuff in, in, that, uh, in, in that library. So there you can there you can get this option uh, option computation expression, or if you just wait a few more minutes, I will show you how you can actually implement this option computation yourself. Right. So um, computations expressions are actually. A great deal more than just uh, left bang. Uh, there's um, there's a whole bunch more stuff there. Uh, they have they have added features which have nothing really per se to do with the monads. So there are things for doing 
um, supporting link queries and doing uh, database queries and so on. Um, uh, so some of the, the keywords that you have in, in the computation expression that you can define in a left bang, there's a do bang, which is basically the same as a left bang, except that this is for stuff that returns sort of, for example, uh, option of uh, unit. But when there is no, when there is no result from it, like no, no value, then you can use do bang. Um, then you have return, return bang, you have yield, and yield, yield, yield bang, and there's also a match bang. Match bang is great, because if you need to do pattern matching in in uh, in a, inside of a, for example, in, in a computation expression like this, typically what you would end up doing is is something like left bang um, this thing to get the, the result, and then you would match on the result. But match bang lets you match dire directly without binding the name, so it's a very clever uh, clever little convenient keyword. Um, and if you go to the Microsoft uh, reference. F sharp reference, you can find a very nice uh, description of all the possibilities you can do with these computation expressions and what you can implement. So, um, before we implement one, let's just look at a couple of small little details here. So, um, a couple of things to note. In, in, in this particular case. Here I have three separate values, x1, x2, x3. They're independent of each other. And I just do this left bang and I bind it to r1, r2, r3. And then I use those uh, results here. But there's no interdependence. I could flip these lines around any way I like. It doesn't matter. Um, since I don't need, to, need the intermediate, intermediate result. And this is, in fact, the great difference between an applicative functor and a monad. So this is, in fact, I'm not really utilizing the, the power of the monad here, since, since there is no interdependence between these things. I'm just collecting values and calling a function. So this would be very similar to what we did previously with uh, saying uh, do stuff. And then we do uh, g of x2 and edge of x3. So this was from the when we did the applicative functors. So that would be the same as this, really. So here, now in the latest incarnation of F sharp, I can actually change these keywords to make to sort of explicit that this is this is an applicative functor, and then I can say instead of left, I so start with left bang, and then I just say and 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 now I've turned this into sort of the applicative functor computation expression. But suppose that this I actually would need the monadic version of this. I could say okay, left bang and left bang. And now I can say, okay, so G2 here could be dependent on R1. Now the types won't match because this would be like this. And H could be dependent on R2. So now I need to get this result first. And then I can feed it into this one. And then I can feed it into this one. And you see, this is now becoming more and more sort of like imperative programming. And there's a clear order and clear sequencing to, to, to events. And that's what the, what the monad can provide. And that's also one of the reasons that if you ever venture into Haskell, you will find that anything dealing with IO in Haskell is cast into this monadic form. So you need to do all your IO inside of a, the so-called IO monad. But that's just for Haskell. That's a parenthesis. So, 
let's just do before we try to sort of look how to implement this um, computation expression for, for option. When F sharp encounters a line like this with a left bang or a do bang or a yield bang or whatever, it, it actually takes this computation expression um, and this piece of the computation expression and it just straight translates into I'm just have some symbolic M here. This is this is the monad or the the computation expression, the, the sort of handler in this case. It doesn't really mean anything. And there's a function called bind that you can define. We'll see this in a second. And it takes two arguments. It will in this case it will do f and x1 to produce a value, and then it takes a new function to stitch this into, which would be some fun. Uh, R1 and then the rest would follow and this is really a sort of a super simple fully automatic translation so whenever a, a, a sharp encounters this computation expression and it finds these left bindings it will turn it into this which is essentially equivalent to what we did by hand in, in the previous earlier all right so, let's implement a computation expression ourselves for, for option, using all the knowledge we have. So, the way you do this is that you create a class, typically one call it something builder, so I will call this option builder, so I say type option builder doesn't take a, a constructor and then I say mem per x dot bind so now I define the bind which is then used for left bang and for do bang and so on and the bind takes two um, two arguments tupled e and c where e is the expression and c is the sort of where the continuation equals and in this case it's super simple to to uh, uh, to implement this is simply just option dot bind e c member x dot return return some value equals and in this case it's just some value and then there is the return bang and that's called member x dot return from and that takes an option value v and it just returns v this is in this case, this is an option. In this case, this is a normal value and it's turned into an option. In this case, V is an option and you just return the option. And these are the only things that we need to actually to implement in order to have this. And now there comes the little magic uh, sleight of hand that you we can do. We can say let option with small letters equals uh, and we just instantiate this uh, option builder. So now option becomes an object of the type option builder which implements uh, these three functions. And, and there's a whole bunch of other members that you can define on it for, for other purposes, all well documented. And the moment we have done this, and I really think you should all try it out, open up your F sharp type in this, create an option object, and then you can just test out this option builder. Now we have created a computation expression for option ourselves. Okay, so before we conclude, let's do one more little example, because just to show something slightly more interesting than uh, just doing, doing the, um, 
uh, always slightly silly option, which is so simple. So let's have a look at the, the list or the sequence monad. And we already talked about this when we talked about the applicatives. So we talked about the, when we did the applicative uh, syntax for it, that it actually turned into a two, two level or three or four level loop, uh, level deep loop. Um, so let's look at how that would look in, in a computation expression. So now I'm just gonna assume that we have a computation expression available for sequences. Here we go. Seek. And I can say let bang a equals and list one to two. And let bang b equals a list from three to four. And then I'm just gonna say return uh, a a comma b. This shows a little bit about the power of these things actually, and how we are able to abstract away uh, noise. So now we're in this computation expression. So now it looks like you, what you would expect from from just normal let is that a would be a list uh, of from one to two and b would be the list from three to four but since we're using this let bang there is more stuff going on there's this flat mapping thing going on and that means that a is actually a is going to be an integer in this case and b is going to be an integer and when i say return a b this is a tuple, but this is actually the whole computation expression here is, a, is on, a, on a sequence or, or a list. So this needs to actually return a list. And what happens here is that A will first assume the value 1. Then it will go to the next line and B will assume the value 3. And then we're going to create the pair 1 comma three. Then B will assume the value four. A is still at one. And we're gonna produce the tuple one comma four. Now A, we have exhausted this list. We go back up here and A now assumes uh, two and B assumes value three, so we get two comma three, and then finally two comma four. At least things. So this expression here produces this list. So it will first pick one value, then the another value, the second value, and so on and so on and back. So what we actually have is a loop over two over two variables, written like this. Which is kinda, kinda cool in a way. Can also be kinda confusing for, for uh, those who aren't used to it. So that was a little bit about uh, computation expressions. And um, there's a whole bunch of them um, in, in the standard library and we're gonna in the next upcoming lectures, we're going to look at a number of them in, in some detail. Most notably, one of the most important ones um, in, in daily work is the async um, computation expression, which allows us to do asynchronous computations. Another one which is very important is the, the query computation expression, which allows us to do database queries and link, uh, link queries. But before we can talk about async, we need to talk about continuation passing, which is not the next lecture, but the lecture after that, I think. So that's, that's it for, for computation expressions. Um, the next lecture will be about monoids. And if you think this monad stuff is heavy going and, and kind of 
confusing or tedious, uh, then I, I can uh, reassure you that mon monoids are super simple. And so simple that you wouldn't really believe it. But very, very useful. So, that's it. Until next lecture.